This is Leonardo, the Jesus Christ lizard, given that name owing to its ability to run on water, commonly known as the Green Basilisk. I bought Leo when he was just a boy. He was fascinating to look at and I fell in love immediately. Even though Leo could live in his current home his whole life, I want to upgrade him to a much larger enclosure. So I got him the Reptisu RKO231. Welcome to part 1 of Project Leo 2.0. Let's unbox the enclosure. I'm gonna give you the Swedish evaluation here. First I'll say something good and then I'll say something bad. The first good thing is that it seems to be very high quality. The first bad thing though is that the terrain was covered with fiberglass or some sort of hair looking thing and that was extremely annoying to clean. The glass was completely covered with that. Whatever, now it's in place. Let's carry on with assemblance. Okay, so this must be the ventilation. There's a hole right here. I think this is for the cables. Everything is labeled, so that's very good. Now I just need to follow the instruction and see what's the next step. The first step is to put these four poles and their labels. One, two, three, four. Let's do that. One, two. Three, four. Next step. Back supports are in. What's next? Step three is to install back glass and side glass. Okay, back glass. Now I need the gloves. Don't fall. Stay there. Seems pretty shady to me. Come here and hold it as I slide it down. This on the bottom. No, this, the middle one, this one that I'm holding. I'm not gonna lie, this part was extremely scary. I was so afraid I was gonna drop the glass and break it. But luckily, with the help of my patient girlfriend, we managed. Hey, stay calm. No, Maci, no. No, no. This is da uno. Non puoi fare le cose a cazzo. Devi fare le cose con calma. Next. Uh, Last thing to finish this assemblance, I need to put this bulkhead in this hole. There we go. And I can just remove this, I think. Yeah. The next thing would be to get started on the background. And I think that will be in four panels. One, two, three, Four. I won't cover this one because obviously you want to view it from this side. The base of the background would be styrofoam, I think. Secure some pieces of wood, some cork parts, some rocks, some whatever I can find, whatever I think looks nice. So today's objective is to source everything I need to make the background. Let's get started. So before I go out and buy things, I think I have things laying around the house that I could use. So I'm gonna go around in the house and see what I have. Let's go, Mina. Right here behind this cylinder, I have some leftover pieces of this background. So we leave that in here, found another small piece. And then I found two pieces of cork bark that you could uh, like cut into shape and kind of integrate somehow into the background. The idea is to take one of these styrofoam pieces, cut it down to size so it fits exactly in here and kind of integrate these pieces with silicone or with expanding foam or something. I don't know if it makes sense, but I have something in my mind that could work. Eight, 
Now we just need to figure out how to cut this without making a mess. I should have one of these uh, melting wires, these hot wires, but I do not have that. What if I do that on a knife, but I only have nice kitchen knives like this. Uh, this is super expensive, I don't want to ruin it, so... Something... It's probably a stupid idea, but... Uh, let's try it. It's starting to glow. It's all red. Let's see. Oh, that's so satisfying. Oh, baby, it's working. It's hard to do it straight, but it's working. <laughs> Should do this outside, perhaps. Oh, that's so satisfying. Mamma mia. And without a single crumble. Huh? Huh? It was, it was a bit hard to keep it straight, but uh, I don't think that matters. Let's see if it fits. Wow. Fits perfectly. The only thing is that I have to carve out so that these fit. Sort of just cut it out like that. Let's see now if it fits. Ah, like a glove. I think you have to go outside because it really smells like burnt plastic in here and that's not good to inhale. So let's go outside. It hasn't rained all day. When I go outside, it rains. That's it. Steady hands. Oh, it's so satisfying. Okay, we're done. <laughs> you see, when Leo is in the water section in this tank, he doesn't have enough space to swim or to move around. But I really think that in this new tank, perhaps we can see him run on the water. At least he could swim around in this new tank and have a good time. If you look closely here, you can see Leo almost run on water. Let me slow it down for you. What I want to do now is to take this knife and sort of carve up some pieces so that it's thinner and maybe has a different shape than just straight like this. I think I want to do it on the floor so I can just vacuum clean up everything afterwards. I'm going to take this razor blade and sort of try to cut this thing in half. Then it's just a case of taking it off like this.
That to me looks pretty good. Now I just need to clean up this mess. To be honest, I think they turned out to be pretty great. I mean, I didn't spend a single cent on this. It was easy to make. It took me less than an hour to make this all together with the cutting. Now I just want to see what happens if I pass over with this heat, this flamethrower. This is probably one thing you should do outside as well. That looks professional. Come on, man. It's so homogenous. The backgrounds turned out to be pretty great. I just have one concern. Leo has very sharp claws. He really likes to climb his current background, the cork bark. I'm just scared that if Leo decides to do the same thing on the styrofoam, it would just peel off. I don't think I can leave the styrofoam as is. Of course, I wouldn't do that. I would cover it with something. I have to cover it with something that makes it very strong. So if Leo decides to climb on it, it won't peel off. But before that, I'm gonna enjoy my lunch. If you didn't know, I'm a chef. I also have a food channel. If you like food, definitely check it out. It's in the description. It's also in the card here. For now, I'm gonna enjoy my Pokeball and I see you later. Mm. So I've laid out three pieces of cork bark like this and the idea is to take some of this expanding foam and sort of secure it to the background. I do not recommend doing this at home. I then try to lay out the pieces like this and get an overview of how I want to place them. I really like this one, this one too, maybe that one, this one, not you, not you, mm, yes you, yes you, yes you, yes you. Let's see, if we have this one in the middle, then this could sort of cascade from here. Yeah, that could be a cool effect. Not you, yes you, not you. Not you either. Maybe you if I modify you a bit. <sighs> it's hard to envision it, but I can see it in my mind that this will turn out great. So I went to the hard store and I bought some new foam. This one is not black, it's white, but that doesn't matter. We're gonna cover it anyway. One important note though, this is extremely toxic to breathe in. Extremely toxic to your skin, to your eyes, everything. Uh, once it's cured, it's fine though. So I think I want to do this in the garden. Sometimes it sounds like I'm talking Swedish, but I'm using English words, if that makes sense. I want to do this in the garden. So let's go into the garden. Of course, it's raining. We have to do it in the front of the house. It's been about a few days since I added the expanding foam to the background and uh, I don't know what's happened here with the middle one. The expanded foam expanded to the back and kind of bent it. I don't know if I can use this one. I've made a little shank here with a pen and a razor blade. I have to do it all over again. Ah! I removed most of the foam. I think I can just place this on top of a new piece of styrofoam. Put some new foam on top of it and that's that. I just have to give this a good cleanup. We can just do another time jump. We're back to square one with this. Tomorrow I'll have to fix this to the background somehow. This has to wait. I'm gonna carve this one. As you can see, I've created like pockets inside here. Pockets that I could put soil in. This background is done now. Well, I need to cover it with silicone and then substrate, of course, but it's done carving. 
so satisfying to do this. I've changed location now, I'm in a stable. The plan is to cover this completely in silicone and then I have some cocoa fiber here that I'm gonna press into the silicone and uh, yeah. Okay, let's go. There are some places where I missed, but I can just go back with some silicone and cover that part. Right. So it's been about a few days since I added the silicone and the cocoa fiber to the background. I can already see that I have missed a few spots. Like there, there, even here. But other than that, it's looking pretty good. And I silicone this in place. So now I just need to cover this one and cover all the mistakes that I did here. To keep the background in place, I'm going to use some cardboard that I duct tape around to make it harder. And a towel to protect the glass. It's good, right? To fill in the seams of the background, I decided to try water lily clay. This is 100% clay that I mix with cocoa fiber and water to create a paste. Finally, I covered it with cocoa fiber and here's the result. So that's all for today. Next time we're gonna test the enclosure with water, install the lights, Wow. add in the land divider, see you in 24 hours, the substrate, the hardscape, the water feature, <laughs> plants. It is a paludurium, it's not a, yeah, okay, sweet. <laughs> and much more. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video. Uh, yeah. <laughs>